Hi, Integrated Math One. Welcome to Lesson 3.1.3b. Um, we're continuing to explore transformations of exponential functions. Last day. Um, I do want to talk about just one quick key term that's going to pop up. It's not a huge deal that you know it, but I want you to know what we're talking about when it shows up. Um, and that is the argument of a function. That is a key term that's going to pop up. In fact, it's going to pop up right now on page 40. So M3-40. So we talked about that D value last time, right? If you add D to a function, you're affecting the output of the function, right? We shift it up, we shift it down, all that good stuff. But here I have three exponential functions that are a little different. Now, we've already talked about h of x last time. We talked about h of x, 2 to the x power. We've already graphed it. We've made a little table for it. We're familiar with this guy. I'd like you to consider three exponential functions shown, where h of x equals 2 to the x is, again, our basic function. We're back to the basics. The operations performed on uh, are now performed on x. So notice, instead of just being a plus 3 on the end, it's now 2 to the x plus 3. Did you catch that? That now the 3, that plus 3 is in the exponent. And for w of x, the minus 3 is also now in the exponent. So we say the operations are performed on x, which is the argument of the function. The argument of the function is just the variable in which the function operates. So you can even think of the argument of the function. In fact, let me do it this way. You can even think of the argument as the, of the function as the independent variable. How's that for bringing it back to uh, the very, very, very beginning of the school year, right? There we are. So you can write the given functions v of x and w of x in terms of the basic function. Do you remember how we did that before with our d value? This looks a little different now. So now the deal is I have h of x equals 2 to the x power. And I have v of x equals 2, and I'm going to put parentheses to the x plus 3 you can see what's happened is I still have that base of 2. That hasn't changed. But the x has been replaced by x plus 3. So instead of calling this h of x, I can call this h of x plus 3 because the x plus 3 has replaced our x value. You see that? So with that in mind, can you write the function w of x in terms of the basic function h of x? Go ahead, hit pause, think about it, write it out, hit play when you're ready to check your work. So I looked at this and I was like, oh, hey, uh, I have the same base, right? Two, that hasn't changed. But now instead of x, it got replaced with h of x. Or pardon me, it got replaced with x minus 3. So this is no longer h of x. This, I'm now saying, I still have h, but instead of x, it got replaced with x minus 3. And boom, there we go. I just wrote the function w of x in terms of the basic function h of x. Yay. Um, sketch and label the graph of each function. Make sure you identify key points. Remember last time we used negative 1, 0, and 1. We found that was really helpful. Go ahead and uh, graph these guys. See what you get. Hit pause to graph them out. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. So I started off with the basic function, h of x, right? That's the one we know. That's the one we played with a whole bunch. Um, and we said that was 2 to the x power. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to plug it in x. I'm going to get h of x out of it. You can even flip over to the other page where we did this, right? We plugged in a negative one, we plugged in a zero, we plugged in a one. We said we want always want those guys at the very least. If I plug in a one, I get um, two to the uh, negative one power, which we said before was a half. If I plug in a zero, two to the zero power is one. And if I plug in a one, one uh, two to the one power is of course two. Um, you do have to make little marks here. You can make more marks if you need to. I'm just doing the basics. 
So we said negative one only goes up halfway. We said zero goes up to one. We said one goes up to two. And again, you could go further, right? If you plug in two, two squared is four, one, two, three, four, and you get the idea. Um, so I'm gonna make my lovely graph. It's not that lovely, but pretend like it is. <laughs> there we go. So let's talk about the others. Let's talk about the others, all right? Let's talk about, um, I'm gonna grab the blue. Let's talk about v of x. I don't know if you remember this. I don't know if you remember this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, and of course, we also said you could write it as h of x plus three. That would also be okay. Do you remember how we said that that c value inside moves left and right? But here's the thing. It was f of x minus c, which means since that's a positive, my c value must be a negative three. Guys, this whole thing is going to move left three units. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take each one of these points that we did earlier, and I'm just going to go left three units. One, two, three. Boom. New point. This guy, one, two, three, boom, new point. This guy, one, two, three, new point. I can even move this guy, one, two, three, new point. Oh my gosh. Oh, and look at that. We just made V of X, and it's going to do what it does. My graph isn't terribly big, but we'll get the idea. It's going that way. It's going that way. I should label V of X. And I should label that one H of X. Yay. Um, oh, W of X, right? Okay, so W of X equals, we said it was H of um, X minus three, right? We said that. Um, or you could just think of it as two to the X minus three. That's okay as well. Now note, my C value is three. Yeah, I don't have to change the sign this time. The inside's always backwards. So since my C value is three, that means I'm going to move right three units. Yup, yup. I'm gonna take each one of these original red points and I'm gonna go right three units this time. So one, two, three, boom, this guy. One, two, three, hey. Move this one over, one, two, three. And this guy as well, since I put it there, one, two, Three. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Hey. Oh dear. Things are getting stuck. There's W of X. Hmm. Look at that. So pretty. I love all the colors. It's so nice. Here's the one that the book has. Uh, looks weird because it's on top of my junk, but you get the idea. In fact, I have it over here. So compare the graphs of v of x and wx to the graph of the basic function. What do you notice? Hit pause, write it down, hit play to check your work. So I noticed that the graph of v of x is three units to the left of the graph of the basic function f of x. And I noticed that w of x, the graph of w of x, is three units to the right of the graph of the basic function h of x. So the x's are backwards. And so this is interesting because that means the x value changed, not the y value. Ooh. Can you go ahead and fill in the table then? Hit pause, fill in the table, hit play when you're ready to check your work. So um, I'm just remembering a few things. I'm remembering that these are backwards. Ooh, I want my red pen. It'll I'm remembering that these are backwards. So that means this C value is negative three. Um, so that means I need to subtract three from all of my X coordinates. So negative two minus three is negative five. Negative one minus three is a negative four. Zero minus three is negative three. One minus three is negative two. And two minus three is a negative one. Okay. Ooh, for this one, because things are backwards, it says X minus three. But that means my C value is a positive 3. So I'm actually going to add 3 to all of my x-coordinates, right? Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. 
negative one plus three is a positive two, zero plus three is three, one plus three is four, and two plus three is five. So um, what do you notice? Go ahead and hit pause. Write down your thoughts. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. Um, so yeah, I just noticed that for the same y coordinate, the x coordinate of v of x is three less than the x coordinate of h of x. And for the same y coordinate, the x coordinate of w of x is three more than the x coordinate of h of x. So remember last time how we did like x stay the same and y changed? And we wrote like, oh, we added three to the y value, whatever. Can you do that now for v of x and then again for w of x? Go ahead hit pause, jot it out, hit play when you're ready to check your work. So just real quick, we said that for the argument stuff, it's the opposite. So my C value is actually going to subtract three here and it's going to subtract the, oh, well, it's going to subtract the X coordinate and the Y is going to stay the same. So I'm going to say that it's x minus 3 comma y. So y coordinate stays the same. We're just subtracting 3 from the x coordinate. And for part b, um, ooh, this one's okay. We already have a minus on it. So I'm going to say that my c value is a positive 3. So that means I'm going to add 3. That's going to get added onto my x coordinate. So x plus 3 comma y, the y value is going to stay the same. That doesn't change at all. So it is a little backwards. So when we have f, um, f of x equals h of x minus c, if my c is greater than zero, if it's a positive number, right, then I'm going to add that many units and shift to the right. So if, if I have a positive c value, we got to ignore the minus for a bit, then I'm going to shift that many units to the right of the graph. If my C value is negative, right, if this, as weird as if, is X plus whatever that is, the graph of F of X is C units to the left of the graph. We're just going to shift to the left. So for the basic function, the C value of the transform function, Y equals F of X minus C, affects the input values of the function, okay? Because those numbers were in the exponent, it now affects my input, not my output. And it does do that weird little opposite flippy thing, right? If it's x plus 3, we're actually, we're actually have a negative 3 for our c value, so we're moving to the left. If we have f of x, uh, if we have 2 to the x minus 3, that means that our c value is actually a positive 3, and we're going to shift 3 units to the right. So I know it can be a little confusing. Just be really, really careful. Remember that the minus is now part of the formula. That's why we have to keep doing that opposite trick. Yeah. As always, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. If you got questions or concerns, come talk to me, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.